So what inspired, you know, BIPOC Play It Forward? Yeah, so this summer, Ramla's daughter set up a march with the Centennial Students for Change organization that they set up. And I went to that as well as a few other marches in Minneapolis after George Floyd just because I felt like I had too much privilege just to sit on the side and watch and do nothing. So at the march, which was really inspiring to hear how much kind of discrimination and hurt and just the average day-to-day life that people who don't look like me go through, I knew that I couldn't just take that and let it be. So your son, I think, went up to speak about what he went through and you talked about your experience with hockey too. And that just clicked in my head that I know hockey is way too white and discriminating of a sport and there's just way too many opportunities and resources that I could provide. Being that I'm a white man from the suburbs who had enough privilege to play hockey, I knew that if I sat around and did nothing, I would just be maintaining the status quo and letting things not change for the better. So I just started thinking about ways that I could help and I had extra gear laying around in a skate sharpener in our basement and I knew that I could provide that extra gear to the players who could absolutely benefit uh, the black, indigenous and other players of color in our community who haven't had the same resources or opportunities that I have and be able to give back to the community to create a more inclusive kind of environment in hockey which has largely just been white men and women playing. After reaching out to all my Facebook friends, whether they played hockey or not, if they knew people who had extra hockey equipment, I thought kind of reaching out to Risha, who I'd known from school growing up, elementary, middle, and high school, that if, that I could guarantee that she had unique and like hurtful experiences just simply because of who she was without anything of her doing. And I knew that with those perspectives and unique experiences that could help drive our mission and maintain kind of the best possible choices and strategy going forward. And so I reached out and she was grateful enough to join along and help me. And I think ever since then, it's just been kind of great communication and teamwork in terms of strategy and going with our mission. I saw Eric's post on Facebook that basically was reaching out asking about uh, gear and anything else that you could donate. And I knew that my sister and I both played hockey for years and we really didn't need a lot of the things that we had around the house anymore. So I loved the idea. And so I was like, reached out to him and was like, hey, I think this is great. I have a lot of stuff that I can donate. And um, after that, I really thought about it. And I told him that I would like to get involved more. So, you know, feel free to reach out to me. And um, like he said earlier, uh, just because of my background and I was grateful enough to have been given the opportunity to play. Um, But that being said, I also know about the fact that I don't think that diversity is handled appropriately right now in hockey. Um, I think that there are a lot of issues still that are needed to be addressed. And um, I definitely experienced a lot of problems firsthand. So I know that that's a lot of what drives my passion for this. And I would love to see diversity at a younger age level so that we can really improve that, obviously. Um, I don't know what else to say. (laughs) Yeah, and I think another inspiration for me uh, at the start of kind of organizing this charity was the Hockey Diversity Alliance, which a few NHL players like Matt Dumba and Nazem Kadri and a few others set up to kind of advocate with the NHL to improve, uh, I think, uh, kind of experiences and basically making a no tolerance racism policy and just fighting for more inclusivity, I think, at a younger age level. Um, in local and youth kind of organizations. So they've been a huge inspiration for me in kind of guiding this project too. Yeah. Ronald, how about you? How, how did, uh, what, what's, what's your side of the things that, you know, as you and Eric had met at that event and what, what's... Um... Um, 
well, actually, we didn't meet. You know, he was there, but I was there too. Uh, but we didn't officially meet or, you know, been introduced yet. What happened was I was working with the community on setting up for signing up school and there's a whole entire new um, people of color moved into the area now. So I've been working with the school district. So um, moving forward, um, my kid's school elementary principal was there. And, you know, she knew me from, you know, when my kids were in kindergarten throughout the whole school um, year for that. Um, Ms. Kaiser, you know, she came up to me and she was like, yeah, Rama, we talked, you know, about my life and what's been happening. We haven't seen each other. And I was like, I told her that, yeah, I like started playing hockey, da da da. You know, I was telling her the reason why I started playing hockey was because I had two of my sons playing in hockey and um, I felt they have experienced so much verbal, racist, racist words towards them on the ice, um, you know, and especially, and I felt like, you know, the coaches were not like representing my kids to the point that it, how much they needed them to protect them, you know, um, and I started playing so I can become a coach um, for Centennial. And then I was telling her that and then she goes, oh, um, you know, um, do you remember his mom, <laughs> you know, took care of my children after school, you know, um, that's when they were in elementary school. And uh, she was like, oh, her son, he's doing this amazing work with the community for hockey. I'm going to get you his number, reach out to him. And I was like, oh my God, absolutely. <laughs> this is a dream come true. I was like, you know, yes. I was like, I need a support because I felt like I was the only one, you know, because honestly, my kid is always the only black kid on the ice, you know, and I just felt like I'm the only one that's like fighting, going to, you know, the districts when things happen with my sons and just like saying it. And I, I've never had a support from any other district where anybody made me feel like they believed in me or my kid on what they experienced. My son was called the N-word on the ice and penalized to the fullest penalty in the penalty box because he started fighting the kid that called him that, you know, and they would tell him they don't belong in the ice and all of this stuff, you know, and it didn't break my kids actually, it built them tougher. You know, it, it was a lot of pain, but it, it made them play harder and better, which as a child, it shouldn't be that way, you know, and I don't want anybody to feel that way. Nobody likes feeling that way. But then I reached out to Eric and that's how we got connected. And I was like, let's do this, you know, let's involve more people of color and, you know, make them more of not affording is feeling secure and wanted and sense of belonging and that we can show them, you know, we've got people that you know that love you and want you on the ice and hockey came from the native americans so i don't understand how it's all of a sudden like it's white people sports only mm -hmm. the mentality you know and it's just like that we can turn it around and have everybody involved the little we can start to move forward and you know uh, I mean, I was born in Somalia. Who ever thought I would be playing hockey? <laughs> you know, when I tell my stories to Somali people, they're like, what? Uh, woman, have you lost your mind? <laughs> but I'm like, no, I didn't. It's for the love of my kids, you know, my boys. I want to, and for your sons too, to come and feel comfortable and see that, you know, that people that look like them want them there and support them and show them, you know, what's done and how it's played. Absolutely. So you recently just started playing hockey? No. Oh, I, no, okay. I've been playing for seven and a half years. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, and then um, I signed up with, um, it's in St. Louis Park. I haven't played because I just did it on my own. I got injured. I was playing on a men's league. Uh -huh. Boy, they destroyed my knees. <laughs> and I'm too old, right? So I was like, no, I can't, I can't take the beating anymore. But Eric found me some, um, you know, nearby where it's all women's team that I haven't tried yet, but I play on the field with my kids, with my boys. I coach them and they coach me now. So it's been good. That's really yeah. awesome. That's when I discovered hockey. <laughs> my, my son discovered it at the age of four in Texas. <laughs> yeah, that's where we lived. Um, mm -hmm. That's where I grew up, where I, you know, of course, there's no hockey there. But um, I took him, my brother took him for ice cream one day and then there was a hockey ring right behind it. 
And he was like, oh, he was interested. What are those kids wearing? He was four years old. He goes, let's go check it out. They went there and he watched the game for a little bit. Ever since then, my son begged me to sign him up for hockey. Mm -hmm. And then we moved to Minnesota when he was six and he was like, please. And I was like, but you're going to get hurt. But you're going to get killed. No, I can't, you know. And I was, and he was like, finally, I said, okay. He brought me a little flyers that they give him at elementary for when the, you know, hockey is like tryouts and all of that. And then I was like, okay. So then he would literally put sticky notes on my forehead when I was asleep, on the door, on my mirror, uh, you know, on the stove, my coffee pot, saying, please sign me up, don't forget. <laughs> so finally, and I signed him up, and it was just like, I was like, oh, I love this. <laughs> I'm going to join. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that, that was my story, not to take over everybody. No. So, but yeah. So oh. then when I found Eric, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> It's fate. <laughs> I think just because it's like most, like all issues regarding race in our country, it's a systemic problem. It's not just a one-off symptom or cause or, or something. It's like a deeply rooted issue. So getting past just the decades and centuries worth long of discrimination in the game, whether it's through like all the coaches or kind of, associations just it's very corrupt and uh discriminating as it is so i think starting small and not giving up and just continuing to work on our messaging and getting that out and trying to get as much gear as we can to as many kids as we can and just trying to maintain those relationships going forward too and i i'm definitely leaning towards starting to look to take on like a coaching role at some point too, like Rama, um, just to let kids know that there's no place for racism in hockey and everyone belongs and should get to play. And just building an environment of inclusivity and kind of making sure that every kid feels wanted and like they deserve to be there, like Rama said. Uh, and that's going to take a long time. And I'm gonna I'm ready for that fight and that battle so I think as long as it takes we're just gonna keep working at it yeah I mean to build off of that I think that from personal experience a lot of times the bit I've, I've noticed a big issue is that there are a lot of microaggressions from I mean coaches I've got a lot of things like that where it's like especially things like oh you know it's easy to see her on the ice you know and you know what they're implying and it's like that's not right i know that's not right i don't want to be you know counted out you know i don't want to be a, an outsider or you know and um that's very clearly wrong and they don't see it as wrong there's nothing that they see as an issue and i think it's things like that too where it's we need to be focusing on things small things like that where if they're not small but it seems small in the same way. So I think that even um, what we're saying is, like Eric said, it's not gonna be um, a quick process because there's a lot that needs to be unraveled and relearned. But I think that it's certainly something that's worth fighting for. And I'm really, really thankful to be part of the process. Yeah, and then, um... It's one of the things that really shocked me was for me to find out that actually the district has funds available for kids that cannot afford. I have never known about that. Mm. And things like that, it's like, okay, it's not on the website. Mm -hmm. Where do you find that information? How deep do you have to dig it? Why isn't it not out there? Why isn't it not shared? Mm -hmm. uh, who are you reserving it for only? You know what I mean? And to me, that was just like, I was really like shocked when I found that out. And I was like, it's those things, it's coming out of my money that I pay for my kids to play, like you know, the assessment fees, all of that. Those things that they collect from collectively from all players, is some of it goes towards those funds. I didn't know that either. And I'm like, here, but check, you're not sharing that information with certain people mm -hmm. like what why is that you know why aren't you not putting it 
out there for people can come that cannot afford it, mm -hmm. you know, rather than just, oh, I know you, you know my son, I know your financial mm -hmm. status, so I'm going to help you yeah. out by telling you, oh, by the way, we can get, you know, your kid, John, mm -hmm. in, because this is the, but you will never tell me. Yeah. And that's wrong, you know, like information like that should be put out mm -hmm. and for people to share, you know. So maybe those of us that can even help, we can help that, you know, and create a better diversity and everybody like included, you know, so yeah. And the thing is like like you said, I I was a single mom, you know, with two boys. I've gotten so much aggression from the coaches. And it, it literally, like, I had to get in another man's face and scream match with him, you know, simply because, you know, I, I'm always trying to explain myself, I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, like, rather than if my kid was sick and I said, hey, my son cannot make it to practice, this is what's happening, you know, like, period. Mm -hmm. I don't have to tell you my whole life story or explain my, you know, what's going on. Mm -hmm with my other kids medical issue to you you know mm -hmm. it's unnecessary you're not asking that to everybody else mm -hmm. but then you call the, the district and tell them oh i quit literally and i was like excuse me <laughs> so that they call me and they're like oh you know rama like what's going on you paid everything fully like how do you want the I'm like what are you talking about well the coach said that i said i've never said that mm -hmm. i've never spoken to this man you know and it's just like, it's really, and I had a coach call me that I was ISIS, a terrorist, um, uh, you know, and all of that stuff. And that am I, am I paying for my hockey with food stamps or free money from the government? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and it's at a, at a tournament, one of our coaches from our district, my son's coach. And I told him, I do not feel safe to even have my son near you if that's how you see me. I don't know how you're treating him in the locker room, you know? So, yeah, it's just been a lot of battles, you know, mm -hmm. just not only being a woman of color, but, you know, it, it was more an attack towards my son. And when I tried to defend my son, he just came for everything that, I, you know, I ever exist, my mm -hmm. existence. And I was just like, you know what? I can't help you. I will just deal with you in a different mm. form but yeah so those things are really out there too it's mm. not all like you know yeah let's bring you know the people of color to the eyes but it's also i want to like and um, like be there to how do we protect them mm. you know and how do we educate the ignorant people that are gonna try to verbalize the hate mm. towards you know <clears throat> these kids on ice they're not adults forgot their children, mm -hmm. you know, and how do we deal with that emotional part of it? You know, we don't want anybody just to destroy something that's beautiful for yeah. someone to do. And I think going off of that, it just kind of shows the systemic unaccountability that exists within hockey and specifically, I mean, the coaches and the parents who, and even the players who learn it from their parents that even if they do something as horrible and disgusting as kind of everything that you've mentioned that your kids have gone through and what you've gone through, they're not getting in any trouble. The only people getting in trouble are you and other people who face that garbage and have to stand up for themselves. And I, until that gets rooted out of hockey and society as a whole, which again is going to take a long time, it's just going to keep requiring requiring work from people as passionate about changing and making a, the world a better place and hockey a better sport and yeah. that's kind of what we're trying to do and i know there are a lot of people out there doing the same thing but it's going to be a long long process Where, where's the the biggest battle here would you say it's kind of on that you know the the blatant discrimination would you say it's just a lot of people just don't know that this exists what where would you guys that, is that a hard question to answer? It, it's a big question. It's a big question, but... Because um, I think... Uh, I'm going to let you guys have most of this. Um, uh, but I think hockey is just such a sport that has been white-dominated. White and there's 
It's just, I think it's the most expensive sport. I think that's pretty fair to say. So there are a lot of barriers to entry. You have to like know who to go to, where to look on a website if you want that help that's there for people. Um, there's the cost of ice time and equipment and skate sharpening and traveling. There are so many ways to shut people out of the game. Um, and I think it's pretty unnecessary because everyone has extra gear um, that they can donate for free and have people be able to access it that way. But I think there are just so many like barriers to entry that it shuts people off before they even get a chance to play. And I think that's one thing that I'm trying to change too. Um, but it's, and that's not even talking about the whole race side either. I mean, just the environment right now, I think is very discriminating and hostile towards people who aren't white and wealthy. And that also just drives people away, I think initially too, unless they're strong enough to put up with sustaining that kind of harsh verbal abuse. And that just takes a toll on people emotionally and I can't even imagine to begin what people unlike me have to go through every day just for being who they are. It's, 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 it, and I'm just trying, I keep trying to learn every day and read as much as I can and learn as much as I can. But I know there, it, I'm never going to actually experience that or know fully what it's like. So that's kind of where I need the help. If people are willing to offer it, I'm going to take as much as I can from you guys and try to be the best person I can be going forward. Yeah. And then um, I'm going to just kind of like, because everything you say emotionally touches me, you know, like as a parent. And the thing is, if you only had a whole entire community standing behind you, rather than feeling alone when you're attacked, and just when you speak of it, it's like, um, you know, that I wouldn't say passive aggressive. It's that um, that too, but it's more like um, condescending talk. Oh, but you know, yeah. and you're like, okay, if I am the adult and you're dealing with me this way, how are you treating my child when he comes to you and tells you, Coach, I'm not on the ice. This kid in that on that jersey number said this to me, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh. Just you're just literally dismissive, just sit down. No, game needs to stop. Somebody needs to be held accountable, you know, and it, it, it's, that is violence. It's just hitting somebody is not only violent, right? Verbal, uh, like for somebody's make, to mm -hmm. speak, to be done, to spoken about, it's violence, you know, and that they should show the kid that you did something about it. But then my son lets it happen and because he sees nothing, nobody's doing anything mm -hmm. about it. You know, nobody's there to be like, oh, you know, they're worried about it. So finally, like I told my son, defend yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, th they come for you verbally, defend yourself. And then he ends up in the penalty box. Now it opens up a conversation, mm -hmm. you know, sadly. But it wasn't opening up a conversation when he literally just skated back to his coach on the bench and said, this is what's happening. It's like, sit down, don't worry about it. What you mean, don't worry about it. So, yeah. It's like not having a community support uh, and, and not having even like, you know, the people that call themselves your friends, your family, hockey families that, but yet they're like, oh, and that's it. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, go, what are you like? You're not speaking, you know, and standing behind me and saying, okay, we're going to support Rama and her family. Mm -hmm. This is ridiculous, mm -hmm. you know? No, none of that. Mm -hmm. So to have a support finally, for me, when I, I was, it felt so good for, to find somebody that felt like you understood it, you got it, you know? So it was just like, oh my goodness, this is really going to be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I feel like I don't have a lot to add because they <laughs> both are pretty awesome um, and they've covered this pretty well. Um, I think that I have a little different of a perspective just coming from a family where um, an adopted family where both of my parents are white and then my sister and I were both Indian. So it's a really interesting 
uh, dichotomy in that, um, you know, my parents never experienced any of the racial stuff, but as players, my sister and I would. So that was really interesting because uh, growing up, it would be like uh, having, I mean, my parents would have to kind of learn along with us. And of course, you know, they were more than supportive, but that being said, they would hear things too, and that would be really hard for them. And um, it's not always easy to uh, teach the people around you that that's not okay, or that, you know, that coaches and your friends, your friends' parents shouldn't be saying things like that to you. And um, so I guess um, my experience is less of a, I had less direct aggression and a lot more of the microaggressions in my personal hockey experience.